Greetings, children of the night. It is I, Count Mathcula. Basically Dracula, but went to school and studied math. There are many parallels between mathematicians and vampires. For example, both are averse to sunlight. They don't go out much at all. They prefer to stay in the darkness, in the shadow. Besides that, they are also averse to people. They can't socialize for the life or death of them. So today we have a very nice, easy integral. Integral 0 to infinity e to minus beta log square x divided by x to alpha. Now, before solving it, I am about to drop the accent and wait for feedback. From both the human and the vampire community, everyone is allowed to comment. After all, it is 2024. So anyway, we have a nice little integral here. And the solution development is not exactly very hard, but it is pretty cool nonetheless. So what I want to start off with is taking that log x term and transforming it. So let log x equal to u, which implies that x here equals e to the u. And this further implies that dx equals e to the u du. Okay, cool. So this implies that the target integral i equals the integral from 0 to infinity. We have x to the negative alpha, which turns into e to the negative alpha times u. Then we have e to the negative beta times u squared, and then the differential element is e to the u du. And my vampire counterpart forgot to mention that beta here is a positive parameter, whereas alpha could be non-negative. Yeah, that should work for... That definitely will work for convergence purposes. And one thing my tired ass forgot was, as x approaches zero you is supposed to approach negative infinity. So we have the integral from negative to positive infinity of all of this stuff that we could tidy up a bit. So we'll write this as the integral from negative to positive infinity of e2 factoring out the negative sign. We have beta u squared plus alpha u minus u du. And now for the argument of the exponential function, we could perform a completing square approach so we have beta u squared plus u times alpha minus 1, u factored out, equal to, we'll factor out beta and write this as u squared plus alpha minus 1 divided by beta times u. So this could be written as beta times u squared plus factor of 2. We have u and we need alpha minus 1 divided by 2 beta. So we'll add and subtract the square of that. Terribly sorry about that. Need more writing space. And that means we're closer to a solution, of course. So all of this is compressed into the whole square. So we have beta times u plus alpha minus 1 divided by 2b squared minus alpha minus 1 divided by 2b squared. And now, expanding by multiplying by beta, we have beta times u plus alpha minus 1 divided by 2b squared minus alpha minus 1 squared divided by 4 times beta. And all of this implies that the target integral i is now the integral from negative to positive infinity of what exactly? We have e to the negative so that's alpha minus 1 divided by, alpha minus 1 squared divided by 4b, that is, minus beta times u plus alpha minus 1 divided by 2b squared du. And we know how exponential function multiplication works, so we can write this as a factor of this thing here outside the integral. So we have e to the alpha minus 1 squared divided by 4b times the integral from 0 to infinity, from negative to positive infinity, that is, of e to the negative beta times u plus alpha minus 1 divided by 2b squared du. And now all we need is a nice little substitution. 
we're, we're going to take this thing here. Rather, we're going to let root b times u plus alpha minus 1 divided by 2 be equal to z. This implies that du equals 1 by root b dz. And the limits of integration are clearly not bothered. We have u going to positive and negative infinity, so we have the same thing for z. So i here equals e to the negative alpha minus 1 squared divided by 4b. Uh, why do I keep calling this b? It's beta. And I keep calling, I'm calling alpha alpha, but why am I calling this b? I really am tired today. Wow. Terribly sorry about all of that. We have 1 over root beta times the integral from negative to positive infinity of e to the negative z squared, which certainly seems familiar. That's our boy, the Gaussian integral. And this thing, of course, evaluates out to root pi. So we have this nice looking structure here that i of alpha and beta equals root pi by beta times e to the negative alpha minus 1 squared divided by 4 times beta. And almost immediately we can spot a very cool result involving some of our favorite numbers using specific values of alpha and beta. So you would recognize this as beta equal to 1 and alpha equal to root 5. So we have i of well, alpha is root 5, beta is 1, so that gives us the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the negative root 5 times, uh, what exactly was it? It was e to the negative beta being 1, so that's log square x dx. This thing would be equal to root pi divided by 1 is just root pi. Then we have e to the negative root 5 minus 1 squared divided by 4. And we could just write this as e to the negative root 5 minus 1 divided by 2 squared times root pi. And we recognize the argument of the exponential function to be 1 over 5, 5 being the golden ratio. So this implies that i of root 5 and 1 equals root pi times e to the negative 1 by phi squared, which I believe is a very fine looking result indeed involving pi, e, and the golden ratio phi. I hope you enjoyed the video. More importantly, I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram. And in case you like the effort I'm putting out, in case you feel like you're learning something or I'm doing a good job, then consider supporting me on Patreon. All links in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.